Alright guys, Tactical Bit here, back again today, and as I'm sure you can tell, I've made the webcam bigger, and I don't know if you like it, leave your feedback in the comment section below, as always, I will read through all of them, and yes, yeah, so, the screen capture is going to be smaller than it usually is, but hopefully we can work around that, things aren't going to be as centred as nicely as they'd usually be, but hopefully the larger webcam will compensate for that, uh, you know, we'll see what you think, and if we want to change it back, we can do so in the future, but I got a suggestion on yesterday's video, uh, which got great support once again, just fantastic stuff guys, subscriber count is just, woohoo! And yeah, any feedback is welcome, so let's get on with the video. Today I wanted to go through some more news, we've got a lot of things coming out, and then go through the Pro League schedule for at least the first week, because, you know, MLG, the CWL, in my opinion, they don't seem to do the best job in communicating this to all their fans. Yes, they put it on Twitter, but it's not like, it's not advertised everywhere, put it that way, and it's not like you can hop onto Call of Duty and see what the schedule is, and anything like that. So I'm going to go through it today, because it's just been announced. Um, the Pro League is starting February the 4th in Colorado. Columbus, Ohio. So yes, we will go through that in just a second here and catch you guys up on all the news, go through some predictions, all that good stuff. So I like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always, and let's hop right into it. So firstly, we have a couple more substitute announcements. The first being that Luca of Mind Freak is going to be the substitute for Space Lee's team, as Maniac says here who are now under this Gen G organization who own like the Seoul Dynasty and Overwatch and they're pretty apparently one of the, in terms of funding, one of the biggest organizations that could have possibly come into the CWL, which is you know, pretty cool stuff. And Luca supposedly is going to be their substitute here. So yeah, it's not like they're going to be flying him out to the States, but if they require him at any point, then that's certainly a possibility. And it's cool to see a couple of Australian players in Shocks and Luca get a potential chance in the Pro League, at least showing that the American teams know these guys are very talented and yeah a little bit more global representation we love all that stuff so another couple of those things to go through in a second do have a potential update to the team Sween roster supposedly they've dropped Brian for Alex not the biggest deal but I'm sure some of you guys follow this team and Dylan of course will be substituting for reciprocity if required but this is the team that was scrimming I guess they're going to try and go through the amateur circuit and do all that stuff throughout the rest of the year and yeah maybe one or two of these players will get a shot at a pro league team a little bit further down the line we also have this this which was added yesterday, which is the Pro Series Mosh Pit. I was talking about League Play a couple of days ago, and the fact that they were adding this playlist to the game with the competitive rules, but just no ranking system as yet. So this is what it is, and well, it's much better than pubs in my opinion, but there are some key problems with it right now for those of you who may have played it already. It's live on PS4 and Xbox, so you know, no delays for Xbox this time around, thankfully. And yes, there are some problems in that the team killing situation is such a big issue because if you kill your teammates just twice then you get kicked from the game and so using streaks or using the war machine is just a no-go zone and in previous games if you were defusing the bomb and your teammate tried to kill you the damage would reflect back onto them but in this game that's not the case so I think even World War 2 had this as a feature so basically they can just kill you while you're defusing the bomb someone sent me a fantastic clip yesterday they were defusing the bomb 5-5 about a win to go up 6-5 their teammate kills them and by killing them they get kicked from the game themselves and uh, they lose a 2v0 so an absolute classic and yeah definitely some things to fix this is only going to be around for a relatively short period of time I think and uh, before league play actually drops supposedly mid-February but definitely better than public matches as far as I'm concerned at the current time. Then we have Enigma6 announcing Sender as their substitute. He is their coach right now. So yeah, he's going to be their substitute for this season, it does seem. We also have this tweet from Intel Call of Duty, which says that on stream, these are the rumors right now. Genji is Luca, as we talked about. Ricky is supposedly the coach of Luminosity. So he's going to be looking over all their stuff, going through VODs, you know, looking over their scrims, stuff like that. And also being their coach, which is, and also being their substitute, sorry, which is something that we have seen with other teams as well, with Envy bringing in Bevels, for example, and Enigma six bringing in sender and you know these are all the these are all the names here if you're looking out for them we have denial which is the former overtime roster bringing in stan another french player i'm pretty sure and heretics bring in legends you know a legendary spanish player to join their lineup potentially as a substitute he got dropped from giants for invidian i think before the pro league qualifier and well it didn't work out too well for them let's put it that way and selium the interesting one going to e united as substitute so of course didn't make the league on face clan e united 
talented, have got a BZ, you know, and other young talents like this. They want to try and get Selium under some sort of potential contract situation. I don't know, similar to what they did with the United Cadets. Maybe get him kind of affiliated with the org. So if they need a change at any point, then he's a guy they can go to. Or another idea is just try and keep him away from opposition and reduce the competition, which is one other idea. So those are the rumours as of now. We also have some rumours regarding the Accelerate team, and I'm not really sure what to think of this, but this is a tweet from Profizi yesterday. I don't know what to think, just want to practice and get ready for the CDBL. I'm writing a book when it's all said and done, man. My life's always been a movie. Jesus, take the wheel, please, just take it. And this is a tweet from, well, yesterday, and... Well, I don't know what I think about this because BZ has also blacked out his picture. He's taken Accelerate out of his title. And yes, apparently this is nothing to do with the roster. I think the roster is going to stay unless BZ, BZ was even talking about potentially stepping down, letting Robbie Beeman take his place. Hopefully that doesn't happen. You know, he's qualified for the Pro League, but supposedly there's, I'm guessing there's some things with the organization going on here, which are causing them some issues. I can't say too much more than that right now, but I guess we'll see what happens in the coming days. And speaking of organizations, this is what it says in the Pro League handbook about potential organization transfers, because of course there's some big name orgs in Phase Clan, G2, etc. that haven't made the league. And people were talking about that, you know, this Monday was the organization lock for the Pro League. But if you read this bit on a four Point one here. Sorry, it's not the best centered, but you know, I, I can't center it all and also have the stuff on Gamepedia also centered. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. But regardless, you can still read it. Written approval of administration for, you know, team license transfers. Administration has sole discretion over whether to bid a team license transfer, but it does imply that it's possible for licenses to be transferred if organizations decide to buy out, you know, a particular roster. Say that FaZe Clan are behind the scenes, they're looking at Midnight, they're thinking, okay, Midnight did really well at the PLQ. If they really start performing in the Pro League as well, then we'll put in a big offer that Midnight won't be able to refuse, uh, you know, possibly. So, you know, that's also something to mention. That's maybe a situation we're seeing here with the Accelerate guys. So, after we got that out of the way, let's go on to talk about the schedule for this week's action of Call of Duty. Starting February the 4th through to the 7th is the first week. The action goes from Monday to Thursday in this week's, in this year's Pro League. Last year it was Tuesday to Thursday, so we have four days of action, but less matches on each day as it seems right now. So firstly, we have Hot Mike, which is airing at 5.30 p.m., on the February the 4th, and that's Eastern time. So 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. UK time. Yeah, not the best for us UK guys, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But this is Hot Mike. If you guys aren't aware of what this is, basically before the Pro League starts, Maven has a chat with three of the pro players, sometimes four, but usually three. So here we have Envoy from Midnight, Havoc from Gen G now, and then of course Dashi from Optic Gaming. And they have a chat about things going on in the community lately. You know, a little bit of trash talk usually goes back and forth and it lasts about half an hour, 25 minutes before the Pro League starts. You can tune into that 30 minutes before the Pro League begins. I'll leave all the relevant links at how you can watch the Pro League down in the description box below because I'm sure some of you guys are kind of new to this stuff and, you know, it'd be great to get you into Call of Duty. So let's move on forward into the actual schedule. These are the teams, of course, Division A, Division B. We went through these the other day. I'll leave a link in the description box below to the video I went through the pools. Optic Luminosity, Midnight, EG, UIU, Reciprocity, Gen G, Red Reserve, and then Division B, E United Spice, NV, E6, 100 Thieves, Heretics Accelerate, and Denial. Maybe Accelerate won't be the same organization in a couple of days' time. Who knows exactly what's going on? But anyway, these are the divisions. For the first two weeks, Division A will be out in Columbus playing their matches, and then Division B will come out and play. So that's it's working similar to how it did last year. Okay, so the week one schedule is right here. I'll go through all the matches. There's actually surprisingly few, I guess you could say. Basically what happens is after the first two weeks of play, so two sets of Monday through Thursday, every team will have played every other team once. And then after that happens, the Division B teams come out from week three to week four. They will, through those two weeks, play every team once. So every team will have played seven matches by the time the start of March happens, which is where roster changes can be made. So just to make this very clear once again, at the start of March, here we go, that's the first roster change period. So we have a month of the Pro League, every team plays each other once, then we have the roster change period in which organisations are free to make unlimited roster changes. So we've seen the backlash that I talked about yesterday with the UIU dropping spoof, bringing in methods, you know, that kind of backlash may be very rife once again at the start of March when they have a whole week to make all these changes. So it's rather exciting, but also kind of worrying at the same time 
time, especially if you're a pro player and you're worried about job security. But anyway, that's the situation as it stands right now. Then after this period, we have CWL Fort Worth or CWL Dallas on March the 15th. So they'll have a week or two weeks to practice with this roster. No pro league during that time. And then you have Fort Worth. And then after that, they'll come back. There's also cross-divisional play this season, as it says up here on Cod Gamepedia. I'll link this down in the description box below, as always. But for probably two weeks or maybe four weeks, the teams will be playing against each other. Uh, so we will actually get to see that, which we haven't seen in previous games, of course. But anyway, let's go back to the schedule over here. The first day, hot mic at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Reciprocity Red Reserve is the first matchup of the night. The first matchup of the Pro League, which, of course, is the Battle of the Twins. Scraps versus Wiskin. Finally, we're going to see it on LAN. And it's going to be a good one, because right now, I would probably give Reciprocity the edge here. Typically, Red Reserve get the better of their European brethren, but we'll have to see it. They've got Dens on the team, you know, Dylan's lurking on that substitute bench if needed to be deployed at any point. So yes, that's the very first matchup. Only two matches on day one. Um, then we have Optic versus Midnight as well. So yeah, a tough matchup there for Midnight. And, you know, we'll have to see if they can compete as closely with Optic as they did in that recent pro down when they kind of mixed it up a little bit and definitely mixed it up with a load of the other top teams. So yeah, coming up very soon, the Pro League, February the 4th on Monday, it all kicks off. Then on day two, we have four matches. Gen G versus Red Reserve, the battle of the symmetrical logos right here. And yeah, that's Space East team versus Red Reserve. Space East team definitely looking hotter right now. You know, honestly, right now, I'd probably favor them. I think I'll do a video in a couple of days time on the power rankings before the Pro League because Cog Gamepedia, we did our power rankings. We got those all sorted and they'll be revealed in the next couple of days. So I can do a video to accompany that before the Pro League because that was requested by a few of you guys. So we have followed through with it. It's very difficult to say right now. Uh, the rest of Tuesday, we have Midnight versus EG, UYU versus Optic Gaming. So after all this drama with UYU, drop-in spoof, you know, bringing methods on, the community is like rapping at the door for these guys' necks right now. And yes, they're up against Optic Gaming game one. So I'm sure the chat is going to be very one-sided indeed. Then we have LG versus Reciprocity. This is a very interesting matchup because LG came top four at Vegas. But no one really knows how good they are right now because, yes, they came top four at Vegas. Therefore, they auto qualified for the league. They didn't have to go through the pro league qualifier. But of course, we saw that both the teams that came top six at Vegas in Lightning Pandas and Team Sween, they both couldn't make the league. So, you know, what's to say that LG also would have struggled had they gone through the pro league qualifier? Who knows? We're going to see how good they actually are on LAN for the first time in a couple of months, basically, here against Reciprocity. And I guess the same with you know, Optic, E United, Sp place as well because Jesus it's already two months since Vegas ish so then we have day three Wednesday February the 6th reciprocity versus Gen G one thing to mention here is these matches are going really late because they start at 3 p.m eastern on the Tuesday which is 8 p.m UK time and this match starts at 11 p.m UK time the reciprocity versus red reserve one and yeah, okay. It's it's not great for European fans. I do remember last year that it initially started at 9 p.m. the league and had like five matches. And then they brought it back to 7 p.m. start. But they've gone back to this like 8 p.m. start here, which is reasonable. But I, I am kind of intrigued at why Reciprocity Luminosity is, is the last match of the night. You know, not convenient for fans, especially like even in the UK, it's pretty tough. Like half 12 start for this one. Then you go further through Europe to your France's, your Germany's, you know, up in the Scandinavian countries. It's getting very difficult indeed. But yeah, I, I guess that's the way of things. It's the, it's the North American World League, baby. So yeah, Reciprocity versus Gen G on Wednesday, then LG UIU Midnight Red Reserve. EG Optic Gaming and to finish off the week we have another four matches so roughly four matches a night so over the first week we have 14 matches total after week two we'll have 28 matches every team will have played seven games which is perfect as you see in a matrix that I'll show you in just a second to finish off these matches Midnight versus UYU Optic Reciprocity which is kind of a, a match of the ages considering you have you know the old Unilad team which did really well against Optic in the latter half of the World War 2 season Red versus LG Gen G Evil Geniuses. So a lot of really spicy matchups to finish up this week. Of course, you have to favor Optic here, but we'll have to see how these teams face once again once they are back on LAN. And yeah, very exciting indeed. Also, when we look at this matrix here, you can see that 
all the play all the teams that are going to be matching up against each other off to the right here is division b so yeah if you add up all the boxes in this region because all of this in this region are just repeats of each other and yeah so we'll see that there's 28 matches in this little triangle right here which means 14 matches a week pretty much every week apart from there'll be 16 matches a week when the teams play cross divisionally as because of course in division a they all won't be playing against themselves which is why there is this grayed out box so hopefully that cleared up a lot of things for you guys let me know which matches you're looking forward to the most in this coming week because certainly some spicy ones right here and yeah how much confidence do you have in your favorite team to bring home the bacon so like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time i'm a bang with that until i no 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 not yet Oh my god, the absolute pilot, Emi. That was pretty cool. Oh, 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 I got crash. Oh, he's buying Turn on him. Help. He's in Dojo. Yeah, in Dojo, weak. Three bullets in him. Haha, <laughs> good shit. You actually did call the 6 0 so I can't.